Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The lesson, the today lesson will be concerned about the, the feature, the properties of the solid state. In the last lesson, we have been talking about the property of the gaseous state. Now we, are, we will be talking about the properties and the features of solid state. Solids are characterized by their own shape and their own volume. They are classified as followed. Look at this. Solids are grouped into ordered solid and disordered solid. In ordered solids, you have a long distance order that, that may be detected. These are also said crystalline solid. The disordered solids are characterized by the disorder, the structural disorder typical of a liquid. So disordered solid are liquid that possess, that have the mechanical properties of solid. Well, uh, the disordered solid will not be studied in this course. They will be a very important topic of the course of applied chemistry that will be done in the next year or this degree, of this course or degree. And now there is not the possibility of studying the feature and the properties of disordered solids. Now we will be studying only ordered solid. And on the eighth turn, ordered solids are grouped into solid with directional bond and solid with no directional bond. On their turn, solid with directional bond are grouped into covalent solids and molecular solids, whereas all solids ordered with non-directional bond are grouped in metals and ionic solids. Well, just for giving you complete information, disordered solids are grouped into inorganic class and organic class, namely polymers. As I told you before, Disordered solids are not studied in this course and will be a very important topic of the course of applied chemistry. Now we will be studying the ordered solid. Well, the ordered solid, as I told you, you can detect a <clears throat> an, uh, uh, long range order which is repeated in the three direction of the space. Ordered solid can be described by the repetition along the three direction of the space of a repeat unit. What a repeat unit is? It is a polyhedron. And the particles that form this solid are located into all the apexes of this repeat unit. And sometimes also their particles are located into the center of this polyhedron and into the center of the faces of this repeat unit. What is quite strange is that only 14 different repeat units exist. These 14 different unit, repeat unit, describe all the type, all the kind of ordered solid. As you can see, these are the 14 units, the 14 different repeat units that, re that describe all the order of the solid. As you can see, the, these are quite simple polyhedron. As an example, there are three out of these 14 repeat units that are cube. Cube with particles located only in the apexes, in the apexes in the center of the cube, in the apexes and in the center of every face of the cube. So this is a simple cubic, this is body-centered cubic, and this is face-centered cubic. Then as another example, there are four out of these 14 repeat units that are a prism with a square a basis. And there are four different kinds of this prism with, with, uh, with the square base. As an example, another repeat unit is an hexagonal prism and so on. Well, <clears throat> these 14 repeat units are able to describe all the crystalline solids that exist. 
So let's begin to see what are the various kind of ordered solid. Solids with directional bond means that the bonds that keeps together the various particles that compose this solid are characterized by the fact that this bond all together, this particle, um, and this bond act only along particular direction. This particular direction of the bond determine particular angle of bond. So in these solids with directional bond, you have chemical bonds that are characterized by a particular angle. Well, when you have covalent solids, the particles that compose that form this solid are atoms, and these atoms are bound all together by covalent bond. As an example, I'm going to give you the unit cell, the repeat unit of diamond. Diamond is composed by carbon, and in diamond you have that the various carbon atoms that compose it are located in the middle of a tetrahedron, and that the apexes of this tetrahedron, all other four different carbon atoms are located. Look at this. As an example, as you uh, focus your attention on this carbon atom. This carbon atom is located in the middle of the tetrahedron. At whose apexes are located? This carbon atom, this carbon atom, this carbon atom, and this carbon atom. Then you must bear in your mind the fact that even also these carbon atoms that are located at the apexes of this tetrahedron by their turn, they are located at the center of another tetrahedron. So this structure will be directed in the three direction of the space uh, toward the, this direction, toward this other direction, on the right, on the left, in front of you, then in the direction, this opposite direction, and by repeating this unit in the three direction of the space, you will have uh, the, the structure of this, of this solid. <clears throat> when you, the, the other, uh, it is obvious that covalent solid are solid with molecular direction. The covalent solid occurs because of the superimposition of the electronic cloud of the atom involved in the formation of the covalent bond. Obviously, this superimposition may occur only according to particular direction. And the direction that are chosen by the system are those directions which allow the maximum, the highest superimposition between the various electronic clouds of the various different atoms. Other solids with directional bond are molecular solid. In molecular solid, the particle that forms this solid are molecules. Molecules, when uh, form a solid, are held together by dipole-dipole interaction, hydrogen bond interaction, or van der Waals interaction. In whatever this kind of bond, the molecule has to assume the correct orientation in order to maximize this kind of direction. So, if the uh, molecules are not oriented in the right direction, this interaction will not be maximized and automatically the system will bring the molecules to dispose in direction such that the maximum of this strength of an interaction will arise. As an example, here it is reported the unit cell of a iodine crystal. You know, look at this. The molecule of iodine is a, a biatomic molecular, a biatomic, a biatomic molecule. Well, 
uh, molecular solid usually are those solid that at room temperature are found or at the gaseous state or at the liquid state. As an example, water when become ice, ice is a molecular solid. Ammonia is a gas in room at room temperature. When you uh, you decrease the temperature, ammonia uh, firstly condensate and become a liquid ammonia, and uh, by further decreasing the temperature, become a solid. And when ammonia becomes a solid, this is a molecular solid. Well, solids with non-directional bond are metals and the ionic solid. The main feature of this solid with non-directional bond is that the various particles that form the solid are held together by electrostatic interaction among charge of uh, among different electrical charge. And uh, we already say that an electrical charge creates around itself an electrical field. A radical field, an electrical field which is of radial type, namely, is an electrical field that every particle of the opposite sign is attracted with the same strength as long as this particle is kept at a distance that is equal. Namely, if we here were in this position on the beginning of this finger, there is a positive electrical charge. This positive electrical charge will attract every negative electrical field in the same, with the same strength as long as these negative charge are located at the same distance. No matter, it is not important at all if these electrical charge are located on the right, on the left, on the top, on the bottom, behind, in front of, the important is just that it is located at the same distance. It may also be said that the equipotential surfaces are sphere. This is the, uh, the, the fact that you say that the symmetry of the electrical field created by an electrical charge has a spherical symmetry. It can also be said that the equipotential surfaces are sphere. Well, uh, in metals, the particle with different charges that are kept together to form the solid metals are the ion obtained from the atom of the metals that are formed by the nucleus of the atomic atom which contains all the protons and all the inner electron. So, the outer electron, the other electron that are located in the outer shell of these metals are electrons that are free to move in all the pieces of the metal because we saw that when we studied the metal, the metallic bond, that because we saw that the energy needed to bring the electron of one atom from the outer orbital of its atom or to the outer orbital of all the atoms that are located all around is very, very small. And replying this kind of way of reasoning for all the atoms that compose the solid, it results that all the electrons located in the outer shell, they f move with freedom in all the outer shell of all the atoms that compose the solid. Namely, the metal is composed by electric, by positive ions 
formed by the nucleus of the atom and the inner electron, kept together by this sea of uh, negative electron that are free to move in the whole piece of metal and that keep together all the positive charge created by the metallic ion. As metals have all its atoms that are equal to each other, these metals can be described properly by considering system, by considering model, which are built using sphere all of the same dimension. Now, to see how this sphere that mimic all the metallic atom are located into the space, we firstly look how they are located into, the, into a plane. Well, in metals, atoms are located into a plane so as to occupy the lowest space possible. And the disposition of the atom in a plane in the way that that occupy the smallest space as possible is this disposition called hexagonal disposition. Look, you have a row of atoms that is labeled with A, 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 A. The second row of atom is not located exactly in the same position. It is shifted of a length that is equal to the radio, to the radius of the sphere. Namely, the center of this sphere is located in, uh, in, um, in the same position in which these two spheres touch each other. And the same for this, the same for this, and the same for this. Then, the subsequent row will be located in the same position as in the first row. It is called hexagonal geometry because look at this, this atom, the center of this atom, they, uh, they form an hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. And another particle is located into the middle of the hexagon. This is the reason why, because this uh, disposition into the plane is called hexagonal disposition. When we consider an older plane which has to be put over this plane uh, denoted by the position A, 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 the second plane of atom will be located in the void space, in the, in the, in the space left void by this structure. Always to occupy the highest number of atoms in the smallest space it is possible. So, this array of atoms, they, uh, over it, can be found two different kinds of position. The position denoted by the letter B written in red, B, 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 and the position denoted by the letter C, written in green, C, 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 C. Well, these two positions mutually excluded each other. Namely, if we put the sphere of the second floor in the B position, the C position will be automatically occupied. As uh, also, we have, if we put the sphere of the second plane in the C position, automatically, the position lab that will be, will be occupied and will not be available anymore. Okay? So, let's think that we occupy the position B. When we have the third, the third plane, the third floor of plane, 
they can be located or in the position A again, or will occupy the position labelled we with C. So we will have two different solids. One solid that can be described by the sequence A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, and a solid that can be described with the sequence A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. Somebody could say, but you do not consider the solid obtained with position, with occupying only the position A, C, A, C, A, C, and also the solid of obtained occupied only the position B, C, B, C, B, C. This is not true. Why? Because the position are arbitrary called A, B, C. The fact is that you have three different positions labeled with A, with B, and with C. And you can use two out of three positions, and you have the sequence A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, or you can use all three these three positions, and you have the sequence A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. It means that the sequence A, B, A, B, A, B is equal to the sequence A, C, A, C, A, C, and is equal to the sequence B, C, B, C, B, C. So you will, we will have two different solids from which it arises to different geometry according to the fact that if you use two out of three available positions or if you exploit all the three positions that are available, okay? In the case you exploit only two out of this position, you will have this kind of geometry. Look at this. In this case, the unit cell that will describe the solid will be an hexagonal prism. Look, this is a plane base, which is uh, created by six atoms in position A, which, which with uh, their center occupy the apex of the hexagon, and a seventh atom in position A, which occupies the center of the hexagon. In the three position of type B, we locate this other three sphere. And over this other three sphere, we locate another hexagon of, sphere, of spheres in position A, with a seventh sphere, which occupies the center of the hexagon. Well, this uh, uh, this geometry is called compact hexagonal geometry. And these are uh, some metals which crystallizes in this geometry, such as zinc, cobalt, cadmium, beryllium, and magnesium. These, This geometry is characterized by a coordination number 12. What does coordination number mean? The coordination number is typical of a structure. Well, the coordination number of a structure is the number of particles immediately close and at the same distance from a, particles, from a particular particle with whom the particle itself may contemporaneously interact. Namely, look at this. I told you, the coordination number of a structure is the number of particles immediately close to a particle, with whom the particle itself may create bond and it may interact. Let's choose this particle in position A. This particle in position A has around itself in this same line one, two, three, four, five, six particles. Then 
it has three particles in the B position above one, two, three, and these are nine. And also it has other three particles in the P position beneath the plane of atom located in the position A. So six plus three, nine, plus three, 12. This is the reason why we say that the compact hexagonal geometry exhibit a coordination number 12, which is the highest possible coordination number. Then, let's see what kind of geometries arises from following, from exploiting all the three available position. Namely, if uh, a plane of particle is located in the A position, namely A, 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 A and above this plane of particles located in position A, we have a particle, a plane of position located in the position B, 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 and then beneath the plane of particles located in position H, we have a plane of particles located in position B, we will have, look at this, we will have the face-centered cubic geometry. Look at this, the face-cubic-centered geometry, the, the repeat unit is a cube. In this cube, particles are located in all the apexes of the cube, and there are also particles located in the middle of the face of this cube. Look at this particle that is located in the apex set, which is in front of the cube, on the top of the cube, and on the right of the cube. This particle is shaded in black, and this particle is said to be a particle located in a position A. Then, let's consider the particles located at the center of the face on the top of the cube and the center of the face of the, the face which is in front of the cube in the center of the face which is on the right of the cube all these particles are shaded in red and these particles are said to be found in the B position because if you look along the diagonal of the cube going from this black atom to this other black atom, you see that the position A does not correspond to no one of these three positions B. Then, look at the particles shaded in blue that are located in the center of the bottom face of the cube in the center of the rear face of the cube and in the center of the left hand side face of the cube. Well, this particle, as you can see from this triangle that has been drawn here, they, they select a plane and this plane is a plane or particle which is located in the C position because if you look along the diagonal of the cube going from this atom located in the apex which is lo located on the right, on the top and in front of the cube. And uh, the, 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 the diagonal going from this atom to this other atom that is located on the bottom, on the left and on the rear side, looking toward this diagonal, you see that the position C are different from the position B in red, and this is different from the position A in black. 
Then, when you will consider the atom that is located on the top, on the bottom of the cube, on the left of the cube, and on the rear face of the cube, this is another atom that will be found in a position that is similar to the position of these other particles, and they are both shaded in black to mean that this position is equivalent to this other position. So, when you have the hexagonal geometry in the plane, and the sequence ABC, ABC is followed, it will result in a geometry which is the face-centered cubic. As an example of uh, metals that crystallize in the face-centered cubic geometry, we have fair iron gamma, nickel, calcium, strontium, aluminum. Well, also in this case, the coordination number is 12. Look at this. If you consider this atom that is located in the middle of the hexagon, which is located in an A position, it will have all around him one, two, three, four, five, six atoms, all in position B, in the same plane. Then it will have three other atoms, one, two, three, in the B position, in the plane that is right above this plane, denoted with position A, A, and then it will have other three atoms in the position C that are located in the plane beneath this plane that is labeled with the A position. So, six atoms in the same plane in position A, plus three atoms in the position B, above, 6 plus 3, 9, and three other atoms located in position C, beneath, 9 plus 3, 12, okay? So, it is uh, reported again, it is demonstrated that the coordination number of the geometry face cube, face centered cubic is always 12, which is the highest coordination number it is possible. Then, <clears throat> there are some other metals which are described by another geometry, which is called body-centered cubic. To describe the body-centered cubic geometry, we must consider another kind of disposition of plane, of atom, metallic atom in a plane. Look, this drawing. We have that the particles of metals are located so as to uh, to form a square, but look at this, the various particles located in the position had does not touch each other. They describe a space, a free space, uh, which is uh, uh, located of four of these atoms that are in the A position and this position is called a B position. Then the third plane of atoms will be located again in the position A. So when we have the square, the expanded square geometry in the plane, only the sequence AB, AB, AB can be allowed because you know the sphere in the position A that are put together in the expanded square disposition, 
they only describe one kind of free position. And this kind of free position is denoted with the letter B. So we have only the possibility of having the AB, AB, AB sequence. If we want to see this geometry in the space, we have this repeat unit, which is body centered cubic. Look at this. These four atoms, one, two, three, four, are those atoms shaded in green, in uh, black, that are reported on the base of the cube. Then, this atom located in the B position is this atom that is located in the center of the cube. Then you have another plane of atoms that are located in the A position, which are in the position that are similar to those of the A position of the lower base. So this atom, this atom, this atom, and this atom. As you can see, the coordination number of this structure is eight, because look at this atom in B position. This atom in the B position will be directly in contact with one, two, three, four atom below him, and one, two, three, four atom above him. So four plus four equal eight. This is the reason why the coordination number of body-centered cubic is eight. Well, the geometry, uh, the, the, the metals, that will crystallize in these, in these geometry will be alpha iron, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium, as an example. Well, I've been told in all what there was to say about metals. Now, let's see the ionic solid. Ionic solid are always uh, non -direct, uh, solids with non-directional bond. And ionic solid, as you already know, are composed by positive ion and negative ion. These uh, two kinds of ion create an array in which two network of positive ion and, ne and negative ion, are, they interpenetrate the one with each other. Namely, you have an array of negative sphere, and in the void, in this, and in the space left void by this array of negative sphere, are located the positive sphere. Obviously, when you put together a lot of spheres, a lot of ion with different charge, you must have that the attractive interaction occurring between ion of different charge must be higher than the repulsive interaction occurring between charge, between uh, particles with the same charge. As the Coulomb love that is reported here, look, must always be respected. And in this Coulomb love, we had that the kind of charge that we are considering are also the same. The only thing that change between this charge is the distance, namely, for the attractive interaction to be higher than the repulsive interaction, it must occur that the distance between sphere charged with opposing sign must be lower than the distance occurring 
among spheres with the same sign. This is a sort of stability requirement. You know, for a ionic solid geometry to be stable, the stability requirement must be respected. And namely, the stability requirement says that the attractive interaction might, must be stronger than the repulsive interaction. And for the attractive interaction to be stronger than the repulsive interaction, it must occur that the distance between sphere <coughs> of opposite sign must be lower than the distance occurring between spheres of the same sign. Then, another point must be cleared, very important. In describing ionic solid, the ionic sphere, the negative sphere, are always presented as larger of a higher radius than the positive sphere. Why this position is practically always respected? Let's think about it. Positive ions, how they are obtained? They are obtained starting from the atoms then this metallic atom loses their outer electron. The outer shell of the metal usually becomes completely void. And thus, we have that a metallic ion is far smaller than the metallic atom from which it originates. Namely, the dimension of an atom depends on the outer shell of the electron of the outer shell. The fact that matter cannot penetrate into each other is a consequence of the electrostatic repulsion between the superficial electron of the various atom. So, when you completely, you bring away from the outer shell all the electrons that are located therein, you will have a structure which will have the dimension arising from the inner electron. And then, moreover, when you bring away some of the electron, there is a misbalance between the positive charge located into the nucleus of the atom and the negative charge of the inner electron. As the positive charge are more than the negative charge, this smaller number of negative charge, smaller number than the positive charge that are located into the nucleus, will be kept more closely to the nucleus, and so this is another reason because of, of which the dimension of the ion arising from a metal that has lost its outer electron will be far smaller than the dimension of the atom itself. So we can say, we can draw that metallic ion are very smaller than the atom from which they originate by losing the outer electron. Then, the negative ion, namely the anion, may be of two different kinds. Do exist, uh, simple anion do exist. Simple anion, what does it mean? As an example, chlorine needs one electron to complete its outer shell so it will be very, uh, very eager of electron and it will take very easily 
one electron from one other atom that will easily lose this electron, and it will fill completely his outer shell. This is the reason why an anion is larger than the atom for which it originated, because there is one electron more, and because this time there is the number of negative charge that is higher than the number of positive charge. So this negative charge will not kept very strongly, very closely to the nucleus. And this is the reason why a, an ion originating from getting one or more electron so as to fill completely the outer electronic shell of the atom will have higher dimension than the atom from which it originated. Then there is another kind of anion, the so-said oxyanion. What are oxyanion? Oxyanion are group of atom of molecular nature that are negatively charged. As an example, SO4 minus 2, you have a sulfur atom which is bound to four oxygen atom and over two out of this oxygen atom a negative charge is located. Well, it is obvious that this kind of oxy anion are far larger than the simple anion, which are already larger, larger than the anion. You know, these oxy anions are composed at least by two atoms. In the case of the sulfate ion, they are composed by five atoms one atom of sulfur and four atoms of oxygen. So it is normal that a molecular aggregate composed of at least two atoms, it will be larger than one atom or also one positive ion. So we can say that anion are always larger than cation and so we can mimic, we can build models in which we describe the, uh, the ionic solid by considering that the network of a larger sphere represents the anion, namely the negative ion, and the positive spheres representing the cation are located into the void space into the space left void by the network of negative, of negative, of negative spheres. It must be said that when you put together a lot of negative sphere and a lot of positive sphere, the stability requirements requires that the positive interaction among the sphere of the opposite sign must be higher than the um, repulsive interaction occurring among the sphere of the same sign, which means that the spheres with different charge, with the opposite charge, must be located at a distance lower than the distance occurring between spheres of the opposite sign, okay? When this stability requirement is fulfilled, it may occur that more than one geometry is stable, that more than one geometry fulfill the stability requirement. Well, when this fact occurs, the geometry in which the system will crystallize will be the geometry with the higher coordination number is possible. 
Why this? Because the higher the coordination number, the higher is the number with which a positive ion may interact with negative ion. So the more are the negative ion that surround a positive ion, the lower will be the energy of the structure. So when more than one geometry fulfill the stability requirement, the geometry in which the system will crystallize will be the one to which the highest coordination number is possible. Well, it can be geometrically demonstrated that the parameter that decide which is the geometry that occurs when a couple of anion and cation are assembled together to form a solid ionic, ionic solid is the ratio between the cation radius to the anion radius. And it can be geometrically demonstrated that the various possible geometry in which ionic solid may crystallize occur in particular range of this parameter, ratio of the cation divided by the ratio of the anion. Now I don't have time sufficient to show this geometrical demonstration. In this, uh, uh, in this uh, document that I prepared, these are reported the, the, some of this demonstration. And if you want to see, see it, you can see it. Now I'm directly sh going to show you that which are the range in which the various geometry are stable. Look at this. You have that when the ratio, ratio, when the ratio, radius of the cation divided by radius of an anion is perfectly equal to one, the geometry which arises is or hexagonal compact or face-centered face cubic to which the coordination number 12 corresponds. But for the ratio cation radius to anion radius to be one, it means that the, cat the, 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 the cation must, be, must have the same radius than anion namely they must be equal and it occurs only in metals. Well, in uh, the reality there is no couple of anion and cation which has the same radius, radius of the cation, the, of the cation equal to the radius of the anion. So this is an ideal case and it is reported here only to have a complete study of the system. When the ratio, ratio of the cation to the ratio of the anion becomes lower than one, the geometry in which the system crystallized is body-centered cubic to which the coordination number eight corresponds. Well, this, this geometry will fulfill the stability requirement of having interaction between sphere charged of the opposite sign higher than interaction between among spheres charged of the same sign valid, namely, which means that the distance among the sphere of the opposite sign is lower than the distance between sphere of the same sign. This uh, 
requirement, this stability requirement, is fulfilled as long as the ratio, ratio, the radius of the cation to ratio of the anion is higher or equal to 0 0.732. When the ratio of the cation to ratio of the, of the anion becomes lower than 0 0.732, the stability requirement that the attractive interaction occurring between sphere of opposite sign are higher than repulsive interaction occurring between sphere of the opposite of the same sign, namely the distance occurring among sphere of different sign is lower than the distance occurring between spheres charged with the same sign, this stability requirement is not fulfilled anymore, which means that the body-centered cubic geometry is not stable anymore. This is the reason why you must go to another geometry with a lower coordination number, which nevertheless fulfill the stability requirement. The stability requirement is fulfilled by geometry octahedral, to which it corresponds the coordination number six. Now I'm going to show you what octahedral coordination mean. Look, this is face-centered cubic. And this is the octahedral geometry. Namely, octahedron is a polyhedron obtained by taking two square pyramid and by sticking to each other the two pyramid through their square bases you will obtain a geometric solid where you have eight different faces, eight different triangular faces, one, two, three, four, above, one, two, three, four, beneath. So you will have an octahedron. And in this octahedron, a positive ion will be located in the center of the octahedron, and eight negative ions will be located at the apexes of this octahedron. Well, when the ratio cation radius to anion radius becomes lower than 0 0.732, this geometry will not fulfill anymore the stability requirement and the geometry that will fulfill the stability requirement will be the octahedral geometry. This geometry will be stable until when? The ratio cation radius to anion radius will become equal to 0 0.414. When the ratio, the cation the, 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 the quantity, cation radio, cation radius to anion radius will be lower than 0 0.414, we will have that the octahedral geometry will not fulfill anymore the stability requirement and so it will become unstable. So, when it occurs, we will have to go to another geometry to which a lower coordination number correspond, but at that 
may fulfill the stability requirement. And this, this geometry is the tetrahedral coordination. Look at the tetrahedral coordination. Look, in the tetrahedral coordination, you have four spheres. These spheres are located, this one and this one, close to each other, and they touch in this point. In the same plane, you put another sphere behind these two other spheres. This is three spheres, this one, this one, and this one, which is located just behind these two other ones. And with the center of the spheres, which is in correspondence of the point in which the two spheres touch with each other, there is a small void space where you to put a fourth sphere. This fourth sphere will create a small void space which is located between these four spheres. And this is the reason why this is called a tetrahedral geometry because this sphere that will be located in this small void space will be located in the center of a tetrahedral. Then the apex of the tetrahedron will be the center of this full sphere. One, two, three, four. Well, to this geometry, a coordination number four corresponds. And you have that, it can be demonstrated, that the tetrahedral geometry is stable as long as the quantity cation radius divided by anion radius has a value that is higher than 225. When the ratio cation radius to anion radius becomes lower than 0 0.225, the tetrahedral geometry will not fulfill anymore the stability requirements and it will become unstable. This is the reason why we have to go to another geometry which will exhibit a lower condition number, but that will fulfill, that will satisfy the stability requirements, that the interaction between the sphere of the opposite sign will be higher than the interaction occurring among a sphere with the same sign, which means that the distance between the sphere of the opposite sign will be lower than the distance occurring between sphere charged of the same sign. And the geometry will be the triangular geometry. Look at this. In the triangle geometry, you have three anionic sphere negatively charged, which are located all all in the same plane, one, two, three. This three sphere will, will create a small space among them, and the cation will be located in this small space. Okay? So the coordination number will be three, one, two, three, but it will fulfill the stability requirement. And on the basis of a simple geometric demonstration, we can say that this triangular geometry will be stable until 
the ratio cation radius to anion radius will be higher than 155. For cation radius to anion radius lower than 0 0.155, only the linear geometry will be possible, namely this one. Look, by summarizing all what I've been saying concerning Hanek solid, when we have the ratio cation radius to anion radius perfectly equal to 1, we have that the stability requirement is satisfied by all this geometry. But the geometry that in which the system will crystallize will be the one exhibiting the highest coordination number, namely to hexagonal compact, the face centered cubic is ascribed to coordination number 12, which is higher than the 8 of the body centered cubic, of the 6 octahedral, of the 4 tetrahedral, 3 triangular, and 2 linear. So when the ratio of the cation divided by of the ratio uh, cation radius to anion radius is perfectly equal to 1, the geometry that we arise from this situation will be or hexagonal compact or face red cubic. But this is an ideal case because there is no couple of anion and cation which exhibit exactly the same radius. So it is reported this fact to complete the study of this topic. When the ratio cation radius to anion radius becomes lower than 1, but higher than 0 0.732. All these geometry, body centered cubic, coordination number 8, octahedral, coordination number 6, tetrahedral, coordination number 4, triangular, coordination number 3, linear coordination number two, fulfill the stability requirement. But which one will exist in reality? The one that will exist in reality will be the body-centered cubic, to which the highest coordination number corresponds. When the ratio cation radius to anion radius becomes lower than 0 0.733, we have that the octahedral, coordination number 6, tetrahedral, coordination number 4, triangular, coordination number 3, linear, coordination number 2, fulfill the stability requirement. But which one will exist in reality? the one with the highest coordination number, namely the octahedral. But this is true until when the ratio cation radius to anion radius is higher than 0 0.414. When it becomes lower than this value, the stability requirement is not fulfilled anymore for the octahedral geometry. And the, the Stability requirement will be fulfilled only for the tetrahedral, coordination number four, triangular, coordination number three, and linear coordination number two will be fulfilled only by these three geometry. But which one will really exist? It will really exist the one with the highest coordination number, namely tetrahedral. But this is true until when the parameter cation radius to anion radius is higher than 0 0.225.
when this parameter becomes lower than this value, the tetrahedral geometry will not fulfill anymore this stability requirement and only the triangular and linear geometry will fulfill this stability requirement. Which one of the two will exist in reality? The one with the highest coordination number, namely the triangular. This is true until when the ratio cation radius to anion radius is higher than 0 0.155. When this parameter ratio cation radius to anion radius becomes lower than this value, the triangular DO geometry does not fulfill anymore the stability requirement and only the linear geometry will be, will be possible, will, will fulfill the stability requirement. To give some example, we can say that hexagonal compact, a face-centered cubic to which coordination number 12 corresponds, there is no ionic solid that exhibits this kind of geometry. The reason, well, we, I always, I already said it, is that there is no couple of cation and anion which exhibit exactly the same value. When uh, the ratio cation radius to anion radius become immediately lower than 1 and higher than 0 0.732, we have that is stable body centered cubic and is more stable than all the other, all the other geometry, octahedral, tetrahedral, triangular, linear. As an example, two solids that crystallize in this body-centered cubic geometry are cesium oxide and calcium fluoride. Then, when the cation radius to anion radius becomes lower than 0 0.732 and is higher than 0 than 414, the stability requirement is present only by octahedral, tetrahedral, triangular, and linear. The one which will really exist will be the, the one with the highest coordination number, namely octahedral. As an example of solid high, of ionic solid that crystallize in the octahedral geometry are sodium chloride, magnesium oxide, and titanium oxide. When the ratio cation radius to anion radius will become lower than 0 0.414 and higher than 425, will that the tetrahedral coordination will exhibit, the, will fulfill the stability requirement. And as an example of ionic solid that crystallizes in this geometry, we have beryllium oxide. When the ratio cation radius to anion radius becomes lower than 0 0.225, we that the tetrahedral coordination, the tetrahedral geometry will not fulfill the stability requirement and only the triangular and linear geometry will fulfill this stability requirement. Actually, we have that boron oxide will fulfill, will crystallize in this triangular geometry. Well, when the ratio cation radius to anion radius becomes lower than 0 0.155, we have that the triangular geometry will not fulfill anymore the stability requirement and only linear geometry will fulfill the stability requirement. But there is no couple of cation and anion 
which has a ratio of cation to ratio of cation, which is lower than 0 0.155, so this is only an ideal case which is reported to complete the study of this system. Okay? So, the solid state is over. Now I'm going to begin to talk a little bit about the feature of the liquid states. Obviously, the, the, the liquid state will not be, we will not be able to end the study of the liquid state in this lesson, but we, we can begin to study the feature of the liquid state and we'll keep on doing it in the next lesson. Wait for a moment. Well, liquids are characterized by their own volume and they have the shape of the vessel that contain it. Liquids cannot practically uh, compress and liquid evaporate. Well, how this feature of liquid can be explained? Well, all that occurs because interaction among the particles of liquid are sufficiently strong to hold them together, but not sufficiently strong to block them in a fixed position in a fixed location as it occur in the solid states. I would like to remember you that particles in solid are not still. Particles are completely still only when we attain the absolute zero. At every, <coughs> at every temperature, different from absolute zero, the particles that compose solid, they vibrate around an equilibrium position. And the higher is the temperature, the more violent is this vibration and this oscillation. Until when we attain the melting temperature, and at the melting temperature, the oscillation, the vibration around this equilibrium position becomes so strong that it can escape from this fixed position and it may go into the liquid state. In the liquid state, a particle, a molecule forming a liquid state, they can freely move within the ambit of the liquid volume occupied by the liquid. But it cannot escape from the liquid unless it has a particular energy. Let's see what is this amount of energy. You know, in the liquids you have a distribution of molecular velocity, and namely a distribution of kinetic energy, which is similar to the distribution of velocity that occurs in gas. So we have the Maxwell-Boltzmann curves that are valid also for liquid compounds. As an example, we report in this diagram the fraction of molecules which exhibit a velocity that is a speed that is reported on the abscissa axis. This is a curve which is reported at a T1 temperature, which is lower than the T2 temperature, which by their turn is lower than this T3 temperature. And uh, uh, like the Gade curve of distribution of velocity drawn for gases, we have that the curve of distribution of velocity drawn for liquid, we have that 
the curve with increasing temperature will become always smaller and always more shifted toward the right. So let's have a look to this formula. This value, delta HV, represents the latent heat of vaporization of one mole of liquid. If we divide this value by the Avogadro number, we have the energy that must be supplied to one molecule for this molecule to escape from the liquid state and to go to the vapor state. Now look at this. The kinetic energy that has this molecule is given by this formula. The kinetic energy is one half M is the molecular weight of the liquid that we are considering. N is the Avogadro number. And we with asterisk is the particular speed that must have a molecule to escape from the liquid state and to go in the vapor phase. Now, let's think that this velocity with asterisk that is needed by a molecule to escape from the liquid state and to go to the vapor state is this one. And this one is the value of the kinetic energy corresponding. We said that when we studied the Maxwell-Boltzmann curves that the fraction of molecule which exhibit a kinetic energy or a speed higher than the one of a particular value is represented, is uh, depicted by the area which is beneath the various curve for values of the kinetic energy or the speed that are higher than the one report. Namely, at the lowest temperature, the fraction of molecules having the kinetic energy higher than the one required for the molecule to escape into the vapor phase will be the area shaded in black at the intermediate T2, T2 temperature value written in red. The amount, the fraction of molecule displaying a kinetic energy higher than the value required for the molecule to escape in the liquid phase will be denoted by the area shaded in green, in um, red, namely this area. At the highest temperature, denoted by T3, written in green, the fraction of the molecule exhibiting kinetic energy higher than the one required for the molecule to escape into the vapor phase will be denoted by the area shaded in green, namely this one. It's apparent from this diagram that this area grows very quickly with increasing temperature. Then when we have been talking about gases, we saw that this fraction of molecule grows exponentially with temperature according to the Boltzmann factor n divided by n0 equal E elevated at minus critical EC divided by RT, where T is the absolute temperature. 
And these explain, this fact explain the fact that the higher is the temperature, the higher is the molecule which exhibit an kinetic energy sufficient to escape, for the molecule to escape to the, to the vapor phase. Well, look at this, wait for a moment. When you have a liquid contained into a vessel and you leave this vessel, for example, on the plane of this desk, think that the liquid is water. If you come back after a week, you find this, uh, this vessel full of water that is completely evaporated. If you do this experiment in the middle of summer, which is very hot, you have that this vessel will be empty, will become empty, instead that in a week it will become empty, for example, in three days. Why this difference of time? Because when it is hot, you, have, you are in a situation like the one of the green carb and the fractional molecule exhibiting a uh, kinetic energy higher than the critical kinetic energy required for the molecule to escape into the vapor phase will be higher. And so this process of complete evaporation will last a shorter lag of time. Whereas when the temperature is lower, it will take a longer time. It will take a longer time. Why? Because it is as if we find in the situation of the black curve, which is referred to the lowest temperature, and we have that the fraction of molecule displaying and kinetic energy higher than the one required to escape into the vapor phase will be lower, okay? So this simple experiment explains it. Another fact that should be stressed is that the evaporation of a liquid occurs with cooling of the liquid itself. And it is quite uh, simple to explain. When a liquid evaporates, the molecule that uh, go away from the liquid will be the molecule which exhibit an energy, a kinetic energy, higher than the one, the, the critical one required for the molecule to escape into the vapor phase. So during evaporation, only the molecule, only the more energetic molecule, the molecule which exhibits the highest kinetic energy, will go away, will escape from the liquid phase. This means that the liquids cool down. But when the liquid be begins to cool down, its temperature will become lower than the temperature of the environment around it. And so heat will flow from the environment to the liquid and it will bring the value of the temperature higher again. So it will create a stationary state in which the temperature of the liquid will not decrease anymore because the energy lost by the more energetic, by the most energetic molecule which go away from the liquid will be recovered by the flow of it going from the environment to the liquid. Well, it can also be said that
it can also be said that the process of evaporation may be stopped by, for example, if this is a vessel in which water is contained, namely a glass of water. If we leave this glass of water on this desktop, if we come back after 10 days, after 20 days, we find it completely empty because all the water has evaporated. But if we put a bell covering this glass of water, we have the possibility of stopping this evaporation phenomena. Why? Because molecules of water leave the more energetic molecule, the liquid phase, but they cannot go away from this system. So when the, this small volume is completely saturated by water molecules evaporating from this glass, then the molecule will begin to condensate again. So after a while, after quite a short time, there will be created an equilibrium situation in which in the same unit time, a particular number X of a molecule will go away from the liquid and the same number of X molecule will condensate to become liquid again. This is the reason why we have that it appears as if the evaporation phenomena has completely stopped. Well, uh, in next lesson I will be showing you a particular feature of a liquid that is called water pressure. Now we should have still something like 20 minutes left, but 20 minutes are not sufficient to complete this very important topic. So I prefer uh, postponing uh, this very important topic to the next lesson. I'm going to tell you just that in next lesson I will be showing you a very simple experiment by which I will explain you the, 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 the meaning of this quantity which is said vapor pressure. And vapor pressure is a particular feature of whatever liquid. And it is very, very important. Okay, uh, the lesson is over. In the next lesson, we'll begin talking about the water pressure and the, the vapor pressure. And we will be talking about these experiments that is depicted here, by which it is very easy to define what the vapor pressure of a liquid is. Goodbye.